course we're building up the new Bronco. Our subject this episode of the Build Up is this absolute smoke show. A 2021 Outer Banks Bronco in carbonized gray. This shadowy specter came off the production line well appointed and ready for adventure. But of course we're going to add crucial rough country parts to amplify its overall style and capability. This new Bronco is just asking for it. And by it, I mean these Bronco must-haves. Upgraded wheels and tires. A three and a half inch lift kit. Our spare tire relocator and tailgate reinforcement. We'll also add our brand new SRX2 adjustment aluminum steps which we're excited to show you and of course some choice lighting options not too much just enough to make experiencing this Bronco that much more enjoyable Hey guys, Gaston with Rough Country. Today we've got a 2021 Ford Bronco that we're gonna outfit with a variety of Rough Country products. We're gonna lift it, we're gonna add front and rear bumpers, we're gonna add ditch lights, side steps, we're gonna add a tailgate reinforcement as well as a spare tire relocation bracket, and we're also gonna add a receiver hitch. First things first, the lift we've chosen is our three and a half inch lift. Now let's talk about what that three and a half inch lift consists of. It's gonna include upper control arms to maintain correct geometry. We're gonna get lift in the front through a combination of preload spacers and upper strut spacers. We're gonna drop the differential with our differential relocation bracket. Out back, we're gonna add spacers to the factory struts to bring the rear up. And we're also gonna add a track bar relocation bracket to make sure that rear axle is centered. And of course, all the necessary hardware is also included. Let's go ahead and get it up on the lift, get those tires off, and get going. With the three and a half inch lift, this Bronco can comfortably run a 35 inch tall tire. And that's what we're gonna put on it with a fuel wheel. The first thing first, we're gonna take the factory wheels and tires off, get the TPMS sensors out of those, and into those fuel wheels that I'll show you in a little bit. Alright, let's get this strut out of here. We're going to undo the upper strut nuts and the lower and pull it out. Alright, now with the strut out, that completes disassembly of the driver's side, minus the upper control arm that we're replacing. I'm going to do everything I did on the driver's side, on the passenger side, then once I have both struts out, we'll install the preload spacers. With both struts out, we need to prep them to install the preload spacers. So the first thing we're going to do is remove this indexing roll pin, a uh, simple pair of pliers or channel locks, Just get a grip on it, give it a wiggle, it comes right out. We'll do that on both and then we will take the struts and install the preload spacers. What a lovely facility. Now we've got the preload spacer installed between the coil isolator and the upper strut hat. As we tighten this nut down, it will make contact with the oversized nut and pull the stud up into place. With the preload and upper strut spacers installed on both front struts, we're going to move our attention to the upper control arms. Now on the driver's side, I'm gonna need to remove this splash shield so that I can get to a bolt with a coupler for the steering shaft. Ooh. 
All right, now that we've got the control arm installed, we've got it snugged up to where you can push it up out of the way, be sure to reconnect your steering. I'm gonna go ahead and get it in place. Slide it down and re-secure with the bolt. Once we do this, we will bring this down, reinstall our wheel liner, and we are ready to drop our differential. All right, we have supported the differential because we're gonna replace this bracket with a differential bracket that relocates our differential slightly lower so we get a better CV angle. So we're gonna remove this bracket as well as this bolt holding the diff in. Everything's bolted down and tightened to spec. The front is buttoned up, minus the front skid plates, but we're gonna replace the bumper, so I'm leaving those off. Now it's time to tackle the rear. And the rear is very simple. All we're gonna do is add an upper strut spacer. We're gonna add a drop bracket for the track bar and a couple of brackets to relocate brake lines. All right, with the strut off, we can go ahead and add the upper strut spacer. We're gonna attach it to the factory strut using the factory hardware. All right, in the rear, we have our strut spacers installed on our factory strut. Those are back in place. We've got our track bar relocated, centering the axle where it needs to be, and we've relocated our brake lines. The only thing left now is to reinstall the wheel well liners and install the wheels and tires. All right, with the wheel well liners installed in the rear, the installation of the lift kit is complete. Now we can move on to wheels and tires. And for this build, we've chosen a Nitto Ridge Grappler in a 35 12 50 18, wrapped around the Fuel Rebel in an 18 by nine. But enough talking, let's get the Bronco out of hover mode, get the wheels and tires installed, get it on the ground so we can enjoy that rough country stance. All right, we've got the wheels torqued to spec and we've got it sitting on the ground. And now we can see just how good this three and a half inch lift on 35s looks on this new Bronco. And it does look great, but we're not done with it yet. We've got a lot more to add to it. We've got front and rear bumpers. We're gonna put a receiver hitch on it. I've even got the spare sitting over there. We're not gonna install that yet because we're gonna add the tailgate reinforcement as well as the spare tire relocator. But for now, let's get to stepping step up our game if you will and other puns as we get ready to put on the rough country steps now it does have a running board style step from the factory but we can do better than this we're going to add a nice aluminum rail system step it's going to cover this nasty pinch weld up from the factory it's going to allow us to dial in the exact position of our stirrup for the step and it's going to make it easier to egress into our lifted bronco all right, the first step is gonna to be to remove the factory running boards. There are six bolts on each side. We'll go ahead and get that knocked out and then we'll assemble the SRX2s and get those installed. Now 
this is a modular system which allows you to add or remove uh, different steps depending on your style. It's aluminum so it's nice and light and there are a couple of options you can actually choose to go with for your particular vehicle. First off, you can actually run just the rail to clean up the bottom of the truck, to cover up that pinch weld and just finish it off really nice. Or you can choose the SR2 version which includes this step. This is the SR2 step. It's got a nice large footprint or you can choose the SRX2. This is a step we're going to run. It's nice and angular and I think it fits this build perfectly. All right, so the system consists of the rail itself, the bracketry to attach the rail to the Bronco or whatever vehicle it may be, the steps, and our end caps. I've got my parts separated. I've got my hardware inventoried and in its correct location depending on where it goes. So let's get to building the steps. All right, our first step is gonna to be to uh, install our center bracket onto the rail. If you'll take a look at the brackets, uh, two are identical. That's gonna be a center and the rear. And then one has a laser cut F to identify it as the front bracket. To install the center bracket, we're gonna take our two bolts, slide those into the channels, get them midway on the rail, and then drop the bracket into place. You know, whether your vehicle's lifted or stock, the SR2 and SRX2 line of steps really help make it look like a finished product. They hide that factory pinch weld at the bottom and just clean up that entire area. They look great, they install quick, and they make it easy to get into your vehicle. We've got it fully assembled, but loosely assembled. We'll go ahead and move it over here and get it mounted to the Bronco and finalize the positioning. All right, with the front step in place and locked down, that completes the installation of the SR2X steps. Now that we're done with that step of the build up, we can go in a couple of different directions. I think we're gonna go this way and focus on the rear of the Bronco. Uh, start out with our receiver hitch install. So this is the Rough Country 2 inch receiver hitch for the Ford Bronco. Comes with the hitch itself as well as all the hardware necessary to install. We're going to go ahead and get started on the install. I'm going to remove the back bumper and get it out of the way and we'll lower it down so we can install the hitch. This install is quick and simple. We're going to take the hitch and the supplied hardware and we're going to line it up with the factory holes. Now we have come across some models that don't have these holes. If that's the case, you're just going to need to center the hitch on the bumper, mark and drill your holes. But this particular one does have the factory holes, so we'll line those up. Make sure it's nice and secure. Install our bolts and torque those down. As you can see, the Rough Country receiver hitch fits nicely in the recess and really complements the factory bumper or an aftermarket bumper that is also designed that way. While we're at the back of the Bronco, before we install the rear bumper, let's go ahead and address the spare tire. Now we've got a nice looking Fuel Rebel with the Nitto Ridge Grappler ready to go on. But before it goes on, we need to address a couple of factors. We need to reinforce the tailgate. We need to bring the spare tire mount up. And we also need to bring the third brake light up. And we're gonna do that using these three products. We've got Rough Country's tailgate reinforcement bracket. We've got our spare tire relocation bracket. And finally, we've got our third brake light relocation bracket. Let's get started. We'll pop the gate open. There's a panel back here. Get it removed, it simply pops off. This tape here will make sure that the gate stays aligned with the panel, and we also need to space it to make sure that it doesn't fall down. We've got the spare tire relocation bracket cinched down 
with the reinforcement sandwiched between it and the tailgate. Now I'm just gonna check my gaps, make sure the gate's still in the same position, and I'll tighten down on these hinge bolts. Strong, supportive, and looks great. Also, there's a spare tire carrier right here. But all jokes aside, this is gonna handle the weight of the 35 or even 37 if you want it to go that high, no problem. The last thing we need to address is seeing this third brake light. We've got the solution in the Rough Country third brake light relocation bracket. It's gonna bring that up so it can peek over that nitto and let people know you're stopping. Installation of this bracket is really simple. We've got four factory bolts that we're gonna take out. And then we're gonna drop this into place, use the lower bolt holes in the bracket to attach using the hardware that we supply. And then the upper holes are gonna be reattached by the factory hardware. So you can see in less than an afternoon, we've added strength to the rear tailgate to handle the larger spare. We've added the relocation bracket to get the spare up in its correct location, as well as a third brake light spacer to make sure that everyone can see your third brake light when you hit the brakes. Now, not only does the spare matching the rest of the wheels on the Bronco look great, but you don't want to run a different height spare than the tire you run every day. You could seriously damage your differential by having different ratios turning at different speeds. So I would say that this is a necessity. Plus, it looks great. All right, here's our Rough Country rear bumper. I've got it up on the bench so we can assemble it. We need to bolt in our tread plates. We need to swap over the parking sensors from the factory bumper and we've got lighting options we need to add. So let's get started. We've got our upper tread plate installed. We've got our six inch slim lines installed in the bumper as well as our two inch cubes on each side. Now we do have an additional tread plate that goes in here, but that actually bolts in as we bolt the bumper to the Bronco. So I need to take this bracket that coincides with the bottom of the step here in this tread plate, and it is going to mount using the bolts that we used to install our hitch. Let me get those loosened up, get this mounted, and then we'll be ready to bolt on the bumper and get it wired in. All right, we've got the back all buttoned up, so let's move to the front and see what we have in store there. So we're gonna go with the Rough Country front bumper. It uh, allows us to add additional lighting as well. It's got accommodations for a 20 inch single row, which we have here, and two two inch pods on both sides, which we have there and there. It also has accommodations for our parking sensors from the factory. So without further ado, let's get the Bronco up in the air, remove the factory bumper, and get ready to install the Rough Country. All right, with the factory bumper removed and out of the way, light as a feather. We'll go ahead and take the parking sensors from it and get ready to put them in the Rough Country bumper. Uh, first, we're gonna go ahead and install the lights. We'll do the cubes and then finally the single row 20 in the center. All right, our plates are in place. Now we are ready to install the bumper. I'm gonna spin it around here, get a good handle on it, stab it in place. All right, lights are good, bumper's good. Let's go ahead and get it up in the air, reinstall the factory skid plates, and then we'll be ready to finish it off with the ditch lights.
skid plates are reinstalled. Now we're going to go ahead, drop the Bronco down, and install those ditch lights. So what is a ditch light? Well, traditionally it's going to be a pod light that is going to mount uh, at the uh, base of your windshield and you're going to angle it out slightly so that it illuminates the ditch on a back road. For this application, we are going to use the Rough Country Black Series 2-inch pod to match the ones that we've installed in the bumper. And what makes it all possible to mount onto the Bronco is this very Bronco-specific spacer. It is going to drop in place. And then from there, we'll be able to mount our light bracket and our light securely. Okay, let's get this ditch light installed. First, we're gonna drop in our spacer. Next, we've got our bracket for the light and the factory bolt with an added washer. We'll go through the bracket, through the spacer, and back into the factory location. That completes the installation of the ditch lights and the buildup on this 2021 Bronco. In this episode of the buildup, we got our hands on this 2021 Ford Bronco. Get ready for the horse puns. Let's go over what we did. We took this Bronco from a gelding to king of the corral, and we started with our three and a half inch lift. We got him sitting 17 hands high, and he looks great. The three and a half inch lift consists of strut spacers front and rear, upper control arms in the front, as well as a differential relocation bracket. And then out back, we also add a track bar bracket to make sure that that rear axle is nice and centered. The addition of the three and a half inch lift allows us to run a 35 inch tall tire. In this case, we've got a Fuel Rebel and an 18 by nine wrapped in a Nitto Ridge Grappler 35, 12, 50, 18. With that additional height, we needed something to stir up up into the Bronco. And for that, we went with the SRX two steps. Up front, unbridled good looks were achieved with the Rough Country modular front bumper, complete with lighting options. And speaking of bumpers, we also added the matching Rough Country rear bumper, complete with lighting options as well. Making sure the Bronco could handle that 35 inch tall spare tire, we went with Rough Country's tailgate reinforcement bracket, the spare tire relocation bracket, and the third brake light relocation. And to make sure we could rein in any obstacle day or night, we added Rough Country's ditch lights. I'm really pleased with how this Bronco build turned out. That three and a half has that Bronco sitting perfect. And what we ended up with is a classy build that's understated and adventure ready. So when you're ready to build your Bronco, be sure to check us out at roughcountry.com.